As we've reported in the past, the country of Mexico is a very dangerous place to live and work if you're a journalist. Since the year 2000, more than 80 reporters have been murdered. The state of Veracruz is especially deadly, with 13 journalists killed since 2010, according to a media rights group called Article 19. On July 31st, a photojournalist named Ruben Espinoza was found tortured and shot to death in Mexico City, along with four women. Espinoza had been working in Veracruz and relocated to the capital city after reportedly receiving death threats. Joining us to talk about these murders is our political commentator, Laura Carlson. She recently wrote an article on Espinosa's case. Laura, welcome to the show. How are journalists in Mexico City reacting to this crime? Journalists in Mexico City are very upset. This is a crime that has, has hit close to home because many of us are here in Mexico City. And it's also a crime that has the hallmarks of a political crime. Of course, we don't yet know yet because there has to be an investigation. But what we've seen since the day the news came out are mobilizations consistently of journalists calling for a full investigation and calling for protection of journalists and the ability to do their work without this threat of violence, as well as petitions and protests all over the country by journalists. They're asking that the investigation, which is currently being carried out by the Mexico City government, be complete and include the possibility that this crime was carried out as an attempt to silence a critical reporter. And they're also asking that protective mechanisms that supposedly exist for journalists within the country be reviewed and be made much more effective. Well, Mexico City has always been considered a safe haven of sorts for journalists. So does this shatter that perception? It certainly does. And that is a major event for many people. Of course, as the population is concentrated in this city, so are many journalists who are doing their work. And there was even a perception, as we can tell by the fact that Rubén Espinosa, when he felt that his life was under threat in the state of Veracruz, came to Mexico City, there's a perception that it's a safer place for journalists who are under threat and for all kinds of human rights defenders. The fact that this terrible quintuple homicide took place in Mexico City in these conditions that has signs of an execution-style murder has shattered the, the whole feeling the, of safety that many people had here and made many people rethink if there's any place in this country where they're truly safe as critical journalists and as human rights defenders. So what have the authorities done so far? You mentioned all the protests. Is there an investigation happening at this point? Yes, there's an investigation into the homicide of the five individuals involved, and it's being carried out by the Mexico City government. Now, at this point, uh, there's some debate because there are some people that are saying that this is a crime that is important enough that the federal government should become involved. However, the federal government has virtually ignored the case. The president has made no statements whatsoever, and it's being handled on the local level. Now, there on the local level, the city attorney general has also come under fire because of the way the investigation is handled. From the very beginning, even before there were uh, the accumulation of evidence and other facts in the case, they began to talk about this as a common homicide that included a robbery. And this enraged many people who felt that there was at least a very strong possibility that the homicide was related not only to Ruben Espinosa's work as a journalist, a photojournalist in, Ver in Veracruz, where he had received death threats from the state government, but also to the work of Nadia Vera, another one of the victims who was a human rights defender in that state and an activist who had also received threats from the government. So the possibility that this case uh, be carried out, this investigation be carried out, and any political motives be swept under the rug in order to attribute it to a robbery and a random murder is of great concern to those who are involved who see it as very possibly linked to the activity in freedom of expression and in human rights of the victims. Well, what are some other possible motives? You mentioned robbery, um, but there were also some signs of sexual abuse at the crime scene. And there were also 
four other women that were found dead next to Espinoza. What can you tell us about them? Well, the four other women, Nadia Vera, who I mentioned, was uh, an activist in the student movement, Yo Soy 132, in the state of Veracruz. She went to the University of Veracruz, although she's from the state of Chiapas. And she had actually been in an interview eight months before her murder saying, if anything happens to me, I blame the government of Veracruz. Her apartment in Veracruz was raided at one point, and she, and she received threats from members of the government. So she also fled to Mexico City under these conditions. The others were her roommates, Yesenia Quiros, an 18-year-old makeup artist from the border, and a Colombian woman by the name of Emilia Virginia Martin, who also shared the apartment, and the domestic worker, Alejandra Negrete. Now, these people uh, have been roughly in ignored in the press, uh, which creates protests of sexism that most of the headlines talk about Ruben Espinosa and four women. And it's true that Ruben has been the center because of his activity as a journalist and as a threatened journalist, but Nadia also had received threats, and the other women also have names and histories and, uh, and, and have lost their lives in this violent crime. Now, as to the other part of the question regarding the investigation, there's been a number of irregularities that have been noted already. The idea of putting forth the hypothesis of robbery before the facts are in is suspicious from the outset, and it has made people wary that there may be something of a cover-up going on. There are also, uh, there's also a denouncement that the one suspect who's been arrested so far was tortured into confessing. This is a common practice in Mexico, and if this is the case, in this particular high-profile case, it will, it will mean that uh, justice has been completely derailed and it will cause more mass protests. It's a very, very serious allegation. There were also some 9 to 14 video cameras in the area, and yet they're claiming that several of them were broken. They're claiming that several of the videos aren't, uh, don't work. Uh, and people are very suspicious about why there isn't more direct evidence from these video cameras. So right now, there's a lot of suspicion about how the investigation is being carried out. Ruben Espinoza was a photojournalist. Um, can you tell us more about his work in Veracruz? Was there something particular that he was working on that made him a target? Uh, he knew that he was a target. Yes, it's very important to understand the context of Ruben Espinosa's work. He was a photojournalist for the magazine Proceso, which does investigative reporting, and he covered, for example, he took pictures at the violent uh, eviction of protesters from the teachers' movement by state officials in the state of Veracruz, and reportedly at that demonstration, someone came up to him from the state and said, if you keep doing that, you'll end up like Regina Martinez. Regina Martinez was a reporter from the same magazine who was also murdered in the state of Veracruz under circumstances that still have not been cleared up. So he took that as a direct threat. He has also taken photos of the Ayotzinapa case of the missing students, not in the state of Veracruz, but a very important human rights case here in Mexico, the disappeared students. And he has covered critical articles of the governor. In fact, he had the cover of Proceso magazine with a photo of Governor Javier Duarte of Veracruz and a caption that said, Veracruz, lawless state. And reportedly, it was this photo that enraged the governor at that point. Political analyst Laura Carlson in Mexico City, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.